Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Podcast. My guest is Michael Singer. He's the CEO of Brainscope, and the website is uh, brainscope.com. So, Mike, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I see Brainscope, uh, you know, you're dealing with traumatic brain injury, TBI assessment. But, uh, you know, if you would let listeners know what's the premise of the company, and then we'll get into your background and how you got into this area. Sure. So the premise of the company is pretty straightforward. Today, there's a major national conversation on traumatic brain injury and concussion. And so there has to be an objective way to assess and measure uh, a a person's uh, uh, brain and to, to come up with an ability that can give clinicians something that they can use and rely upon that is much better than just a couple of fingers um, in the air. Well, all right. So that's how they're diagnosing traumatic brain injury. I mean, holding up, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? And if the person says the right number, they're, you know, get out there and play. And if they say the wrong number, then they may look into it further. Yeah. So if you, if you just take a step back and you start to look at brain injury assessment today, it's very much of a subjective capability. And it just depends on how smart the clinician is, how experienced they have, they have in dealing with these different kinds of of, uh, of, of of patients. And so what we do is, is we provide a capability that is FDA cleared using artificial intelligence and the like to take it up at many, many notches from a very subjective assessment today to an assessment that is objective and reliable um, and very much um, something that they, that the clinician feels much more comfortable about, comfortable about and that has a very positive impact on patient outcomes, meaning that the patient will have a, you know, just will, will, will be better more quickly, more rapidly and the like by using our capability. That clinician will be able to say with much greater certainty what, um, what they should do. And so it is using artificial intelligence. It's using all these various capabilities, all um, developed in uh, coordination with the military and with our clinical partners to create this capability. So what what would this look like in the field? Uh, is it training for a technician? Is it a device that they'll use to figure out if someone has TBI? I mean, what? You know, yeah. So what, what we've created like? is a medical device, and the medical device is a um, it's a handheld uh, 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 device with um, with a capability that rapidly is applied to the forehead. And uh, what we then do is we measure a patient's brain electrical activity, and that brain electrical activity has particular signatures that we pick up, and those signatures then turn into particular assessment capabilities that are then shown on the screen of the medical device. So uh, we take what is currently a subjective, hmm, I wonder if that patient actually has a uh, a brain injury to something that is far more objective. And here's the way that, here's how we do it in particular. We uh, address two, the two core questions that a clinician uh, wants to answer after a person has hit their head. The first question is whether or not the patient might have a bleed inside the brain. And we do that mm -hmm. by offering a capability that uh, assesses whether or not the patient might require a CAT scan, which is the instrument used today to determine whether or not they're, they, um, they might have a brain bleed. So that is done in a non-invasive way, rapidly applied right on the forehead. That answers the first question. The second question that the medical device uh, that we offer called BrainScope 1 also does is it also addresses functional injury, in particular concussion. And we do that through a panel of capabilities, including uh, assessing brain electrical activity, that uh, that forehead strip that I've been mentioning, but we also do it through other capabilities as well. All in, what we provide is a panel of capabilities to answer those two core questions. Hmm. Um, okay, so 
let's talk about traumatic brain injury in general. I don't know if people really understand its effects or what can happen. You know, I, I know there's something called a concussion. You know, I've, I believe I've had one before. Um, but what is traumatic brain injury? We should have, I guess, started with this earlier on. And what can be the effects, uh, you know, some of the worst effects if it's not treated properly? And you know, how does it affect people? Sure. So in, in terms of what traumatic brain injury is in its most simple form, traumatic brain injury is when somebody hits their head hard enough uh, for there to be some level of concern that it could have an impact on a patient's health. So that is a traumatic brain injury, otherwise known as TBI. And when the patient hits their head, there are um, a number of things that the clinician is concerned about. And the first that they're concerned about is whether or not the patient might have a bleed in the brain. And the way that they go about that today is, is if you go to the emergency room, you will get a CAT scan. That is sort of the that's sort of where it all ends. But unfortunately, CAT scans do not pick up more of the functional injury, which is today known as concussion. And so that is um, when you sort of add in the potential brain bleed and you put in the functional injury and you add that up together, that in a nutshell is traumatic brain injury. In the United States today, there are between 5 and 10 million people a year who hit their heads and need um, and should require some form of assessment and potential intervention. Many people who go to the emergency department get a CT about 80 to 90 percent of all people who go to uh, an emergency room will actually get a head CT. Of those, nine out of 10 will normally have a negative CT. So there's a very um, high level of overuse of CT technology. There is no technology today that's used out there today in a meaningful way to assess functional injury. There are uh, neurocognitive tests and the like that are out there today. So what we do is we assess the full spectrum of traumatic brain injury that affects those 5 to 10 million people in the United States, and estimates are that around the world that number could be as high as um, 75 to 100 million people uh, globally. That's a very, very big number in comparison yeah. to um, other disease states when you, start to, when you start to think about it. Put that in perspective, globally per year, 75 to 100 million that is uh, roughly uh, one third to one quarter of the entire American population, just to give you a sense. Huh. So, what uh, again? What are the implications of uh, undiagnosed traumatic brain injury? What, how will it affect someone's life? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, worst case in an urgent care, in an urgent situation, is it could be life threatening because there's a, a blow to the brain. A person can be acting completely normally. Um, and yet they have a, a bleed in the brain, something called a, a hematoma, as an example. And that can be, of course, lethal. And the, and the very sad um, example was years ago, uh, there was a, um, a British actress named um, Natasha Richardson married to Liam Neeson, and she fell on a ski slope and did not, um, and, and at the time was, was not particularly symptomatic. Um, and she was um, experiencing something called the lucid interval. And unfortunately for her and for her family, um, what, what had happened was there was a hematoma, and, and of course, um, she, she passed away from that. So the first implication is, of course, to ensure that there is no brain bleed, and, and that's, that's why CT is used so um, prodigiously, not only in the United States, but around the world. The second impact mm -hmm. is around concussion. We see that on football fields today, and it has a very near-term impact, and can you have a middle-term impact and a long-term impact? The short-term impact is, is that there's, um, it, it becomes a very um, life-altering experience to have very bad headaches, to be able to uh, function normally, uh, to be sensitive to light, be sensitive to sound. Um, and so this is a, a major problem that a lot of people have right after um, these so-called mild traumatic brain injuries. And that's, I know it sounds like a, uh, an oxymoron to call it mild traumatic brain injury, but that's what it is. That's what a concussion is often called. Medium term, it can, these can linger for a very long time. And we've seen that with many patients who particularly um, in the military and in sports and the like who've hit their head multiple times. And the longer term implications are still being studied in the field, and um, there are many um, there, there's, there's many researchers and, and, and many people out there 
who believe that continuously hitting your head can lead uh, to much more dire implications, including a disease called tr uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, which is uh, which has very much Alzheimer's-like um, uh, implications. And there's been uh, several athletes who have uh, who have aged and have subsequently died, often by suicide, from uh, from the implications. Yeah, I saw a movie in which Will Smith played a doctor that was investigating this in the NFL. I don't remember the movie, but it was. But maybe it might have been concussion or something, but it talked exactly about that. Yeah, it, it is. It is the exact story, um, and, it, and the movie is indeed called Concussion, and um, and it's exactly the story of. Uh, it started with the um, the Pittsburgh Steelers center Mike Webster, um, and his very very sad story, and and how um, Dr. Bennett Amalu was um, uh, was the uh, forensic pathologist who. Uh, was one of the first people, and in many eyes, the first person to really identify it and um, and, uh, and 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 coin it as chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Right. Yeah. So, um, even if you're able to diagnose it more accurately, what what can we do about traumatic brain injury? Is there anything that can be done? Yeah. There's. Um, I think there's a lot that can be done. I think what what is very clear, what's being shown today, is that. The earlier that it's found, obviously, the better. And it begins, of course, with that incredibly important initial assessment as to whether there could be a brain bleed. So just being able to do that is very important. In the United States, there are actually sort of two um, scenarios that are important to that end. The first is, is in emergency rooms around the country, over 90% of all CTs are, are negative meaning that patients are enduring a tremendous amount of radiation exposure. They're sitting in emergency rooms for six hours, um, and they're not getting particularly great care just by getting a, an unnecessary CT. Uh, but they have to do it to ensure there's not a bleed for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's the other camp, which are the, um, uh, the, the sports teams, where there's uh, often not enough um, assessment, not enough uh, that's going on, and not and, and so there's a requirement and a need to ensure that they do get the proper care, and in fact would get a CT, and we see that often. And there's something called second impact syndrome, which can often be the uh, uh, a, a lethal problem. And so that's the first thing from sort of a short term perspective, and then from a long so you, you avoid death, you avoid the um, unnecessary CTs and the like. So that's the first thing that sort of sets, a, sets everything apart. From a, medium, from a short and medium term perspective, the earlier that you identify it, that leads to the current interventions that are out there today. And so that includes a lot of the, um, the, the, the protocols that are out there today to better care for those patients once they are early identified. The worst thing that can happen, as an example, is an athlete that would play through one of these traumatic brain injuries, and that turns into a very, very real problem, um, uh, particularly in our uh, society today in the United States, where there's a, a desire to want to play no matter what, not to let your teammates down. We see that in the military as well, where our service members will do anything for their country, including sacrificing um, their brain health, and so we see that. The sooner that it is identified and objectively identified, the, and, the, and the system cannot be gamed, these patients uh, have much, much better outcomes. Well, in the assessment, can you go into any of the details on what the assessment looks like to see if someone has traumatic brain injury? I know like for, you know, to tell if someone has a heart attack when they present at the hospital, there was like a checklist that, you know, Dr. Atul Gawande helped come up with of, I think, I believe five items, but, you know, any more details again on what your assessment looks like or how it works? Oh no! And your your heart attack assessment is is a is a perfect um, uh, comparable in, in in so many ways. And so if you go back, um, you know, decades ago, and you start to look at at somebody who might have had a heart attack years ago, basically it was very much of a subjective assessment. Um, today, when you look at a heart attack assessment, you begin with, you know, uh, uh, a, a subjective assessment around symptoms and the like, and then that turns into imaging, and then imaging, often it turns into an enzyme test, and so you take that full panel of capabilities, and it allows the physician to make their clinical diagnosis in a very objective way, which um, where, where the world of, of cardiovascular assessment is today 
Uh, that is not where we are today in the neurological world. And so when a patient today hits their head without a, a brain scope capability, as I mentioned, the first thing that happens is, is there's that CT, and um, that's assuming that they go to the, the hospital, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you're in the sports world, there can be some neurocognitive testing that can occur, but that's basically it. So you're sort of 40, 50 years behind um, in comparison of the cardiovascular world. And what we do is, is we have a one-stop shop capability right on a handheld capability, beginning with um, a, an application of a, uh, of a band that goes across the forehead that reads one's brain electrical activity. It takes about five minutes to apply and five minutes for the test to occur. And then soon thereafter, um, the, uh, the, there's the ability to add other tests right on the capability that we have today, including neurocognitive tests and others. All of that becomes a very similar type panel to what is done in cardiovascular. What that, what that test is, all in between 10 and 20 minutes, gives that clinician for the first time that objective panel, very similar to the heart attack uh, example that you used. And it answers, as I mentioned before, those, those two key core questions around A, whether or not there's a structural injury, which would be a brain bleed, and secondly, functional injury, and then that can lead to a much earlier intervention or a clearing and allowing the athlete or the person to move on with their life as they normally would. All right, that's great. Um, what stage are you at with uh, with your work? Is the assessment in use, and you know how many people is it assessed, and do the statistics look very different from what is being told to us by other assessment methods out there right now? Yeah, so uh, the, the capability has been developed over a decade, heavily in partnership with DOD, and we've done literally thousands and thousands of uh, recordings using our EEG and other capabilities to get an FDA clearance, which occurred uh, a year, I guess two years ago now, um, roughly two years ago, and what it um, uh, has allowed us to do is to offer the capability um, to a, a broad swath of, of users. The biggest user by far is the, the military, um, and that makes all the sense in the world given that they've um, helped develop the technology, but we are also selling around the country in urgent care centers, emergency departments, and universities, um, and um, we've literally assessed uh, thousands of patients thus far. We have uh, invested heavily in technology development and intellectual property and the like, um, we are investing more and more in distribution and branding because people are less and less aware of us. And because of our heavy-duty clinical studies, um, we have done things what we feel is sort of the scientific route um, that will lead to broader adoption once people understand how we've done things and what we are offering as not only very significant clinical <coughs> benefit, but also economic benefit as well. well very good. So what's the best way for uh, interested parties to get in touch with you and find out more and see if it's sure. um, useful in their clinic? Yes, I would suggest that they go directly to um, our, um, our website, which is www.brainscope.com, um, and they will find exactly where and how to contact us, and we would be delighted to, uh, to answer any and all questions. All right, that's great. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, and uh, you know, it's a super important area, so thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. 